when you're not in power and when you keep losing elections and when your legislative strength in the Lok Sabha as well as in the state assemblies keeps going down, your ability to send people to parliament, your ability to reward people, your ability to give people positions of power uh, reduces significantly and, 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 and people will start looking for better opportunities. Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times and I'm Aditi Prasad and with me is the paper's editor-in-chief, Sukumar Ranganathan. Welcome to the show, Sukumar, once again. Now, five months of the year 2022 and the Congress party has already seen five big exits. The latest, of course, being a party stalwart Kapil Sibal, who was also a key face of the G23 or the group of 23 leaders who have been demanding reforms in the party from within. Now, all this is happening even as the Congress party held its three-day long Chintan Shivar in Udarpur earlier this month in what many analysts have been calling a desperate bid to overhaul the party ahead of the 2024 general elections. Uh, so, Kumar, my first question to you, after a long time, uh, there was this Chintan Shivar, the Udarpur Chintan Shivar, is it, um, you know, it was meant to rejuvenate the party regurgitate the party, but instead even more leaders are, are sort of leaving the party, the Congress party. What do you think is the whole, you know, what, according to you, what was the whole point of the Chinder Shiva there? See, there are uh, two ways in which uh, any organization, irrespective of whether it's a political party or a company or just about any organization sets out to solve problems. Um, especially when you know the the problems are of the magnitude that the congress has been facing um, it, it's gone on for a long time and then the party is now a very very weak political force um, and easy uh, prey or rather extremely vulnerable uh, to other regional parties which are seeing this as an opportunity to increase their own strength at the cost of the congress um, Right, and, and that's really what we've been seeing play out uh, over the last several years. Now, any revival uh, is a function of many factors. And, and you know, the, these are all things that you have to keep doing day in and day out, and, and it's really not uh, rocket science. So, so let's look at the four things that I believe any organization needs to do. These are obviously not specific to the Congress party, but even as I'm speaking, you will notice how relevant they are to the Congress party. And, and, and you know, like I said, I'm not saying anything new. It's not rocket science. It's not some great insight that I have. Um, so what are the four things? The first one is leadership, right? Uh, uh, the second one is resources. You, you can't fight a battle if you don't have resources. The third one is messaging or communication. It's the clarity of messaging or communication that comes out. Uh, again, organizations that do well, parties that do well, the communication is crystal clear. There's no room for ambiguity. The organization or the party speaks in one voice. Uh, and you know, clearly you can see where the Congress is going wrong. And the fourth one is organization. Are you, do you have the kind of structure and do you have the kind of organization which, um, you know, makes it uh, better, right? Uh, management theory has this enduring debate about whether strategy matters more or structure matters more, right? Uh, both are relevant. Um, the unfortunate thing in the Congress's case is I, I, I think it doesn't have either. And, and that, that's really uh, beginning to hurt. Now, do you need a Chintan Shiver? Do you need a brainstorming session to really uh, come out with something extraordinary? So let me flip this around and ask you, when was the last time you heard of a corporate offsite that came up with a great idea that revived a company, right? It uh, doesn't work that way. Right? So uh, I, I think people who are expecting something miraculous, something magical to happening in the shivers, uh, you know, were probably, I, I don't know, living in La La Land. It, it, that's not how things work. Uh, uh, politics and, and, you know, the uh, counter to the Congress, right? I mean, you, you look at the BJP, it, it's, in a, it, it, it's everything that the Congress is not. Uh, this is a party and it's a party organization which lives, breathes politics, 
uh, right? I mean, uh, it's 24 by 7, it's got an organization, it's got resources, it's got that clarity of messaging, and and it keeps doing it again and again and again, right? Uh, um, We've often commented on how uh, for the BJP, it doesn't seem to matter whether it's a municipal election or a a Lok Sabha election or the Rajya Sabha election, it it approaches it with the same fervor, right? And we've seen it. Not necessarily a good thing, right? I personally believe, for instance, that the Prime Minister should not be uh, uh, changing, converting any of his speeches into a political speech. BJP believes that uh, as the Prime Minister uh, and as its Prime Minister, as the country's Prime Minister and as, you know, the leader of the Legislative Party, he sort of like, right, right goes and uh, presents its point of view. Uh, and I think that's exactly what the Congress needs to do, and then that's where it's been found lacking. Now, now are, are all these things that the shiver can solve, the chintan shiver, the brainstorming session uh, can solve? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you know, in Rahul Gandhi himself, you know, in his speech at the Chinchinder Shiver, he himself pointed out that, you know, uh, I remember listening to him and he said that communication is a, is an area where the party is weak and, you know, we, they, they need to learn from the ruling party, you know, uh, the manner in which they were communicating with the people. Uh, the sad part, of course, is that it took, it's taken them eight years in the opposition and Chinchinder Shiver in Udaipur to sort of actually uh, wax eloquent about that point about communicating with the public because that's the business you are in. Uh, but looking at it from that point of view, from what came out of that Chintan Shiver and the exits in, in, in view of the exodus within the party and, you know, five big names uh, leaving the party in the last five months, uh, you know, one big name from Gujarat, one from Punjab, uh, Sunil Chakhar, a very uh, seasoned uh, politician from Punjab, uh, who's been with the Congress Party, two former union ministers in the, 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 in the, the there was RPN Singh, there was Ashwini Kumar. So a lot of people have left the party in the last five months. I mean, if you talk about the last five years, there'll be many, many more. But let's just talk about now and talk about the Chintan Shivar uh, that happened just earlier this month as a, as a strategy. Were they able to come up with a strategy according to you? What was your big takeaway from the Chintan Shiva, especially when it comes to uh, a strategy for winning elections? Because that's what this is all about, right? Uh, the preparations for 2024. Do you think that before and after the Chintan Shiva, I know that you just said that you don't have much hopes for Chintan Shiva um, uh, solving any of uh, Congress's problems. But uh, from the big takeaways that you took from that, uh, do you think they've come up with a plan? They've come up with some, uh, uh, you know, a, a list of. Uh, uh, sure, mm. I got it. Um, yeah, two points. Yeah. Um, before weighing in on that, I will just digress a little bit and and look at, you know, refer to what you started with, which is the exodus. It's only natural when you're not in power, uh, and and. Uh, it is going to be impossible for you to fulfill even reasonable expectations of people. Uh, let's take the case of Kapil Sibal. He was in the Rajya Sabha. Uh, natural to expect that he will want to continue in the Rajya Sabha. Party was not in a position to guarantee that he would be in the Rajya Sabha, right? I mean, it, it's just when you're not in power and when you keep losing elections and when your legislative strength in the Lok Sabha as well as in the state assemblies keeps going down, your ability to send people to parliament, your ability to reward people, your ability to give people positions of power uh, reduces significantly and, 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 and people will start looking for better opportunities um, either to serve the people, as some of them say, or to fulfill their individual agendas and ambitions. And there's nothing harm in people having individual agendas and aspirations. So as long as, you know, I think deep down there is still this desire and this understanding that at the end of the day, everyone has to serve the people and do good for the country. Uh, did I see anything in what happened at the Chintan Shiver to uh, suggest that things will change? I think that's the broader uh, drift of your question. Um, they were, they said a lot of right things, but, but you know, again, to, to go back to, uh, you know, what I've been speaking about, which is more from the management and the organizational point of view. Uh, you can say all the right things, right? I I think a lot of people uh, uh, underplay the importance of what I call operational effectiveness, which is just going out and doing it day in and day out, right? You have a plan, but how do you implement the plan? Who implements the plan? 
uh, are you doing it the right way are you doing it effectively um, and are you doing it consistently are you doing it repeatedly because you know that 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 that's what will help you win it doesn't matter to you know if if you do if you do it well for two weeks and then forget to do it that's not going to work like i said 24 by 7 365 days a year uh, you have to play the game for want of a better word or a better term right and and uh, i'm i'm not sure that they have the stamina and the intensity to do it uh, i it it be like you know i i i do not i will not mind in this case being proved wrong because i think the country is crying out for an opposition it's important to have an opposition because i think an opposition uh, makes the government itself that much more responsible and that much more responsive right on on what it does how it behaves uh for instance you're not likely to see the kind of hasty decision making uh the loss may be well intentioned but un- unless you know uh, really discuss and debate them thread bare uh, you're going to have a lot of missteps of the kind that we've seen uh, so i think it is important to have uh, an opposition uh, so it would be great if they can uh, do what they promised to do in, at the chintan shivir but like i said a lot of it or operational issues uh in the past we we we've not seen the congress do this uh in in any significant way and any consistent way so we'll have to see whether they go out and do this uh you talked about uh, a corporate and you uh, the first point you raised was leadership uh that the leadership is important and that is a point that even prashant kishor uh in his uh, so called uh, you know or reported a uh, blueprint for uh, you know rejuvenating the congress uh, apparently talked about uh, there was uh, also there has always been talk about um, having uh, somebody other than the gandhis at the leadership uh, role but you know at least the chintan shivar uh, at least at the chintan shivar that was ruled out that, that 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 the gandhis are going anywhere the gandhis are going to remain there uh, do you believe uh, because that is a thing that many people have been saying that there needs to be an overhaul in terms of leadership for the party and do you see that leadership change happening do you see a democratic elections happening to the party leaders position two the, two separate questions right i mean yes. uh, the second question I, is easier I, to I, answer the, the second question is easier to answer do i see a change happening the answer is no given the track record of the party let's not dwell on that i don't think that change is going to happen Hmm. uh first question is do i think a change in leadership is needed uh, again i would to, to get back uh, uh, to what i've been saying which is from the organizational point of view you should look at what uh, the board of a company will do if the company continuously uh, is loss making right hmm. uh, the first thing they'll do is change the ceo and and many boards uh, it doesn't really matter sometimes making a change is more important than the kind of person you're bringing in because it sends a signal and 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 quite honestly can they do any badly if they make a change because they're doing pretty badly as it is right um and um, what i personally believe that leadership is one of those things that should be measured in outcomes uh, and and um, you, you take any of the outcomes they have had uh, and and there are people within the party when i speak to them they say you know priyanka gandhi is is also emerging in her own as a leader um, i would look at the outcome in uttar pradesh and, and you know it's easy it it's easy to offer a variety of explanations it, to say that hindu vote consolidated the bjp played the welfareism card very well these are all things that we know right i mean when you, when you uh, fight an election you know that the opposition is not going to sit back and twiddle its thumbs while you you know go out and do what you have to do uh, so they will obviously come hard at you and and i would like to look at outcomes um, so in up the outcomes were abysmal uh, and uh, nationally in election after election the outcomes have been pretty poor uh, so uh, what is the worst thing that can happen if you change right because uh, uh, the worst thing that can happen if you don't change is something that the congress party in my opinion is living day in and day out uh, they are losing elections uh, they are becoming irrelevant uh, they are seeing their uh, leaders desert them for other parties uh, they are seeing small regional parties uh, erode away at their base and they are perilously close to the 20% mark 
uh, even nationally, right? Um, and that is worrying. If you go below 20 percent, um, and we had a data analysis on this some time back, if the Congress goes below 20 percent in any state, it, it never really comes back above 20 percent, right? And then mm. just like a sliding thing. And, and the same thing, if it happens at the national level, it just means you become even more irrelevant than you are today. So, so uh, there's no harm in changing because what, what's the worst thing that can happen, especially when the worst thing that can happen to you has already happened? 